Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Y. Coney and welcome to Bright Star Baby and Child Clinic. In this video, I would like to talk about babies and their sleep. As a new parent, you may well feel that you are tired all the time due to all those sleepless nights. Well, fret not, you are not alone in all this. I think most parents have to go through a few sleepless nights. That is a badge of honour of being a parent. Let's tune in to learn a little bit more about babies and their sleep needs and also some tips to help them sleep better. Here are some questions or some topics that I'll go through. How much sleep do babies need? Uh, I will go through also some tips to help babies sleep better. What is SIDS, SIDS? And also what are some of the positions that are safe for babies to sleep in? Firstly, I would like to answer how much sleep do babies actually need? So here are some basic information about babies' sleep cycles. Before the age of six months, babies don't really have a regular sleep cycle yet. Now, newborns roughly need about 16 to 17 hours of sleep in a day. But they may not sleep long stretches, only about maybe an hour or two at a time. Because of this erratic schedule, the AAP, the American Academy of Pediatrics, actually do not state, they chose not to list down the recommended amount of sleep that, that babies need because their sleep schedule is so erratic. Now, although their sleep patterns or their sleep schedule is very here and there in the first few uh, months of life, but as your baby matures, he or she will get a better, more regular schedule and much more routine and can go longer between feedings. The sleep can stretch longer. As babies get older, their sleep needs also decrease, so they need less sleep. By about age three to four months, babies usually can sleep around five hours or at least five hours at a time, but it depends on every child. Human sleep needs vary widely. So one baby's sleeping time may not be the same as another baby's sleeping time. Bear in mind that in the same child, the sleep needs also vary as he or she gets older. It is quite normal for a six-month-old baby to wake up during the night, but he or she may go back to sleep uh, after a few minutes, or they may not. At some point during the first year of a baby's life, he or she may, need, uh, may sleep up to 10 hours at night. This is also variable. Some babies sleep more, some babies sleep less. Why do babies sleep so much? Now, babies spend more time sleeping than being awake. This is very different from adults. And this is because experts believe that sleep is a time for substantial growth. They believe that sleep allows the brain to develop, build new connections, build new brain networks, as well as it engages in activity that allows the baby to develop thinking skills and learning skills and likely helps the formation of behavior. Sleep, along with a good proper nutrition, allows the baby to grow and develop, as well as acquire motor skills. Do also remember that naps contribute a significant amount of time to their total sleep time. Here are some tips for babies to sleep better. Number one, get tuned in to the rhythm of your baby's sleep patterns. First of all, parents need to understand that newborns have very irregular sleep cycles in the beginning. And slowly, slowly they will develop a, a longer stretch of sleeping. Parents must first not have any expectations that your baby should sleep very long stretches because you have to understand that they need to wake up frequently to feed to help them grow. Parents need to not have big expectations that their babies will sleep very long. Okay. The more anxious you are uh, of wanting them to sleep more, the harder it is for babies to sleep well because babies can sense parents' anxieties. Number two. Baby should sleep in parents' room. Babies in the same room, but in his or her own crib, ideally. Some experts say that parents' bed may not be so safe for little babies because they might get trapped in all those soft sheets, soft bedding, and also big fluffy pillows 
that may be quite uh, hard for babies to get out of. Uh, especially when they're newborns, they don't have head control yet. It might be quite easy for them to get trapped inside those sheets or might suffocate as well. The other thing is they might also get rolled over by an adult if the adult fell asleep. So why we say that um, babies should room in with their parents is because just the simple presence of the parents will usually give the babies a lot of reassurance and may help them sleep better. Number three, make daytime as playtime. Try talking and playing with your baby as much as you can during the daytime, which will help uh, lengthen his or her awake time during the daytime more and help her sleep longer periods during the night. Number four, try to follow a consistent, calming bedtime routine. Overstimulation in the evening can make it quite difficult for your baby to fall asleep. Number five, put your baby down drowsy but still awake. This will help your baby associate um, putting your baby to bed with bedtime, with sleep. Now remember to place your baby on his or her back and make sure the crib is clear of soft toys or any blankets or soft items that might pose a suffocation risk. Some people will choose to hold or rock their baby until they fall asleep, um, which is all right. But bear in mind that this motion may make the baby make the baby get used to this motion and may make it very hard for him or her to break that habit of rocking to sleep. Of course, if that's what you want to do and you don't mind doing it for a longer time, that is okay. Number six, try to wait a while first before responding to your child's fussiness or crying in the night time. Try not to step in too quickly the moment your baby starts crying, okay? Now, you know some babies like to fuss and sort of cry a little bit before they fall asleep. They will try to find a comfortable position. They will, they will just fuss a little bit um, to, to sort of a way of soothing themselves, okay? Try not to step in too quickly the moment he or she cries. So to give time for him or her to self-soothe and fall asleep on his or her own. Just your gentle presence and some reassuring words, calming words and just a little pat, maybe all that he or she needs to fall asleep on his or her own. Number seven, consider using a pacifier. Now pacifiers have been shown to uh, help some babies fall asleep on their own because it tends to be a, a soothing uh, mechanism. Number eight, Try to be calm and remain sort of gentle and low-key in the middle of the night when your baby needs care. For example, if he or she wakes up in the middle of the night for feeds or, or diaper changes, try to remain sort of quiet and calm. Don't make a big fuss of it. Um, turn on the light sort of dimly only, not, not too bright. So again, again, avoid overstimulation in the middle of the night. That will help the baby associate night time as sleep time and not play time. Number nine, respect your baby's preferences. Meaning, some babies naturally prefer to be night wakers, some prefer to be day wakers. Depending on what your child's preference is, uh, you may want to adjust your routine to suit his or her schedule. These are based on natural patterns. So, Try as much as you can to adjust and slowly change it to your preference. Okay, we are basically just saying take one step at a time. Do not rush your child to be a night sleeper if he or she is naturally a night waker. Try to respect their own natural pattern as well. Now the next question is, can a bedtime routine help your child sleep better? Yes, it does. Now, although in the beginning, baby's sleep schedule may be all over the place, um, but it is good to stick to a routine as soon as possible. However, experts do believe that the best time to start a routine, a bedtime routine, is around four to six months old. But no harm doing a calming bedtime routine as young as possible. Um, but do bear in mind that in the beginning, babies need to wake up often to feed. So just put this in your mind. But 
a calming bedtime routine is always appreciated and it will make bedtime easier for you and baby as he or she grows older. Now here are some ways to help your baby get ready for bedtime. Start winding down the activities, not to do anything too overstimulating. Try to limit the loud noises, so no loud noises would be preferable. Turn off your phones, turn off the television. You can give your baby a nice warm bath. You can massage your baby or uh, stroke, gently stroke your baby's head you know, after the bath. You can consider giving your baby a pacifier. You can sing to your baby or you can turn on some gentle white noise, soft music. You could also read a bedtime story to your baby. Start dimming the lights and try to stick with this routine as much as you can. Just to get baby used to the fact that all these activities lead to sleep in the end. Okay. Next, I will talk about SIDS, SIDS. What is SIDS? SIDS is Sudden Infant Death Syndrome. What is Sudden Infant Death Syndrome? It is the sudden and unexplained death of a baby younger than one year old. Most SIDS are associated with sleep. So in the past, it used to be called crib death. The diagnosis of SIDS is only made once everything else is ruled out, for example, uh, the doctor has ruled out known causes such as infection, heart defects, lung problems, abuse, any trauma, etc. Okay, once all of those things are ruled out, then then only you can diagnose SIDS or SIDS. SIDS remains the main cause of death among infants one month to less than one year old and it remains quite unpredictable despite years of research done on it. So far, there is no known cause of SIDS. That's why it's called an unexplained death. But there are several risk factors that you know you should be aware of. Then you can understand the risk factors and try to minimize the risk factors of SIDS. Most SIDS cases happen in babies two to four months old. Most cases also occur during cold weather and it occurs more in boys than girls. Most SIDS cases occur in babies whose mothers smoke, drink alcohol, have drug use history during pregnancy or after birth. Babies born to mothers who had very poor prenatal care, premature babies or babies with low birth weight, a family history of SIDS, babies born to mothers who are very young, less than 20 years old, Babies exposed to tobacco smoke or smoke after birth. Babies who are overheated, overbundled. Babies who sleep facing down or they sleep on their stomachs. Now here are some of the ways to reduce sleep dangers, okay, which inadvertently reduces SIDS. Make sure your baby gets all of his or her vaccinations done. These vaccines help protect babies from serious illnesses and may help prevent SIDS. All children should be vaccinated so that they can protect themselves and to minimize spread of diseases to other people as well. Try not to smoke and keep your baby away from other smokers and secondhand smoke. Babies who live with smokers are at an increased risk of SIDS. Keep your home as well as your car smoke free. Now, during pregnancy, mothers are encouraged not to smoke not to take alcohol as well as not to take drugs. Babies of mothers who do those things uh, have a higher risk of SIDS. For mothers who are pregnant, please, please go to all your scheduled prenatal visits. Babies with mothers who don't get good prenatal care tend to have higher risk of SIDS. Always put your baby to sleep on a firm, flat surface on his or her back. Also, keep them safe by putting them in a crib or a bassinet. Do this every time baby sleeps, including naps. And uh, try to put your baby to sleep in his or her own crib uh, and not to share the bed with the parents. You can share a room, but try not to share a bed. Try not to use sleep positioners like an anti-roll pillow or like a nest, all right? 
babies that can sometimes get trapped in those things and may suffocate because of that. Try to keep certain soft things, soft bedding uh, items away from your baby's crib. For example, things like bed bumpers, loose bedding, or toys, soft toys, that sort of thing, blankets, big fluffy blankets and pillows away from your baby's crib. Again, they pose a suffocation risk. Try to remove any hanging window curtain cords or any electrical wires or any wiring or anything around. Try to keep them away from your baby's crib because sometimes you never know, babies might get entangled in those cords and, and um, wires. They may get tangled in them and they may choke. All right, so it's quite dangerous. Keep all those things away from baby's crib. Try to keep the room at a comfortable temperature neither too hot nor too cold. Overheating has been shown to be a risk factor for SIDS. Try not to let your baby sleep in a car seat, a stroller or a carrier. Babies who sleep in these uh, positions can sometimes suffocate and that is because they sleep with their sort of head crunch like that. It may press on their airway. So the moment you are able to, try to take baby out from those car seats or strollers or whatnot and put them in a firm flat surface to sleep in. Don't put your baby to sleep on uh, soft surfaces like on a couch, a waterbed, a sofa or any soft mattress. Babies who sleep on these surfaces have been shown to have a higher risk of getting sits. Breastfeeding your baby for at least six months has been shown to greatly reduce the risk of SIDS. Now parents, if you're really very tired, do keep in mind that it is safer to feed your baby on your bed compared to the sofa or the couch. Studies have shown that there's a much higher risk of babies being suffocated or getting SIDS when he or she is placed on a sofa or a couch compared to the bed. Now this is just a comparison, a relative comparison. So couch and sofa, higher risk of suffocation than your bed. As soon as you're able to, try to move your baby to the crib, his or her crib, after you finish feeding. The very famous quote for pediatricians is, back to sleep, front to play. So when babies are awake, Try not to always keep them on their back. Do place them on their tummy for tummy time. So tummy time, it helps babies strengthen their neck, their shoulders, their arms, as well as to prevent um, flat spots on their head. Always supervise baby during tummy time. Well, that's the end of the video. I hope it helps you learn a little bit more about babies and their sleep and what are some of the safe positions that babies should be in. Just to end the note, SIDS is so far an unpredictable and unexplained uh, condition. So try to minimize all these dangers as much as you can. Um, but again, don't be too stressed out about it, okay? Meanwhile, stay safe and take care. Bye.